Hi guys, welcome back to Sim Racing on the Game of Muscle YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Race Room Racing Experience and setting up Race Room Racing Experience. For those of you that are perhaps new to the simulator, or those of you that have been playing it, but feel like uh, you can probably get some improvements from it if you just adjust it or had the right settings. So we're going to start off by going through how to actually get your controller detected and working and then we're going to focus on setting up the sliders the analog input the pedal input the wheel input then we're going to go to the force feedback and then we'll take a look at the graphic settings as well as some car specific settings so to begin with the first time you load up race room you're greeted by this rather nice screen with uh, some background uh, whited out background cards and we're going to go to the settings here and we're going to go to our control settings and you'll see there's controller profile so we clicked on that and we've got a list of everything these, these are our controller profiles uh, and you should see one controller profile which uh, basically has the name of your steering wheel um, or, or one of your devices you got plugged in in our case we've got a Thrustmaster TSPC racer plugged in and we've got a profile here so you just click on the one that's got your wheel name on it uh, it doesn't really matter and once you clicked on it you selected it you can then go to primary functions and begin setting up your devices it truly is exciting now most of these things are completely self-explanatory and uh, down to your personal preference of how you want to set things up but there you go steer left steer right accelerate we've got separate pedals it doesn't seem to really care and you just put it all in as you need to and that's all your input device for all your buttons and everything the main ones um are already bound or should already be bound if you've got a g29 for example or a t300 or a tspc racer or, or any of the fanatec wheels the main one should already be bound you might need to bind yourself things like look left which i like to use the top left button and look right the top right button and uh, if you push both le look left and look right the camera automatically looks behind you so you don't need to bind a, a look behind your button you also on this screen on the primary functions will need to bind your shift in in this case we've got th8a and uh, it just comes up and we can just put it all in there by double clicking and selecting what we want and uh, you're all good there now uh, other useful things to make sure you've got set is a starter and an ignition because on some modes in the game you need to use the starter push the starter and then press the ignition to actually get the car started so make sure you also bind uh, starter ignition and uh, I think all the other ones are pretty self-explanatory on that on that setting on that <laughs> on that setting on that settings page now the secondary functions what you really need to have bound or what I, f I find the most useful is brake bias front and brake bias rear I use the Manatino switch on this TSPC racer for that setting because it's the kind of thing that you're going to be tweaking uh, once, you once you've got to pace on a lap you uh, will probably be tweaking your brake bias with each car and getting things dialed in so the back end comes out uh, the right amount uh, depending on how much you push push on the brake um, a nice thing to, to also change is the car seat positions though saying that by default it should be I think it's WASQ and A I think these are default settings they should be because we've done a default install of the game um, the car seat settings are really useful for adjusting the actual camera position uh, when you're sat inside of the car and it will be remembered for each car generally if you're playing on a screen you will want quite a low field of view and then you'll want to move the seat forwards a bit so you can just see the rim of the steering wheel in the car and uh, you'll end up with something closer to one to one for if you actually drive in the car in reality in VR uh, you can still use these adjust seat settings so it's useful to have them for VR as well uh, and that can help with uh, just to, you know getting things dialed into exactly as you want to without having to move yourself manually and then press the VR camera reset button now as for the VR camera reset button you've got VR reset position which uh, I've bound I've, I've set to the uh, button 12 of my TSPC racer I definitely think it's worth having the camera reset position button bound to your steering wheel uh, as it's the kind of thing that allows you to adjust it on the fly you might find that you're looking slightly off to one side and when you're in the pitch you might want to reset it so it's really nice to have that band to a steering wheel while you're in VR and you can access it without having to fiddle around looking for your keyboard button uh, you've got VR increased eye distance multiplier and this is a sort of virtual IPD uh, when you change this it will change the scale of the game so if you uh, move it up 
uh, the higher it is, the smaller things look. The lower it is, the bigger things look. By default, I think the game's at 0.95, and uh, generally, you shouldn't really need to change it. I find that 0.95 is about right. If you do fiddle with it, you can bind a reset button to reset it back to the game's default. I've set this to use close bracket and open bracket to uh, adjust it, but I've, I don't think we really need to adjust it anymore because they've dialed it down by default into the game to something that's actually quite good. That's pretty much it for the secondary functions. Now we'll go to the advanced settings, and on this page you can see the actual inputs for the devices. There you go, you see our steering wheel, you can see our throttle, you see our brake, and you can see our clutch. Now we've got the H pattern shifter on because we've got the TH8A shifter, as I say. You don't want uh, speed sensitive steering, steering, min steering speed, max steering speed. Those don't matter if you've got a steering wheel because it, it'll be ignored as, uh, well, as you've set it to zero there, but also because you're using a steering wheel, not a gamepad. Uh, race room racing experience supports game pads and you can even play with the keyboard and mouse if you want to if you're absolutely insane that is so uh, those settings don't really matter once you've got your your wheel set up other than just having speed sensitive steering set to off uh, steering sensitivity 50 percent 50 percent means it's linear and uh, you know that that's what you want you want it on linear so 50 percent steering sensitivity 50% throttle sensitivity, 50% brake sensitivity, and uh, you're good to go with everything all, all linear, linear, linearly, linearly set up. Uh, clutch sensitivity, I don't know why I've got that on zero, but it's... Uh, that's all fine. Either way, either either. Um, steering dead zone, you don't want any dead zone. You don't want... Any throttle dead zone, typically, most people don't want any throttle dead zone. Uh, brake lower dead zone. Now, the brake is quite useful to have a dead zone if you've got really, really sensitive pedals. And you'll find, actually, it might even be worthwhile in our case to actually have a throttle dead zone. Because if I'm just tapping the pedal, I'm not even pushing it really, you can see our throttle move. But with our brake, if we don't have a dead zone, if I literally just lean my toe on the brake, I'm barely touching that. That's like a... It's like a feather's dropping on the brake. You see it's going up and it's quite easy to accidentally activate the brake. So it's really good often to have a little bit of a lower dead zone on the brake just to filter out the accidental resting your foot on the brake so you're not driving around with the brakes on. Uh, but that's the lower dead zone. So obviously just affects the lower part of the input. We've put ours on 7%. Clutch lower dead zone. We've set this to 30%, which is quite high uh, because we've set our clutch up to not really be that detailed i've got it so basically if i just push it more than two centimeters it goes to 100 percent um it depends from game to game how you want to use the clutch i i tend to often just use it as a button because you end up with a lot of jip with different simulators if you if you uh try and use a clutch like a real car clutch um so we've got that set to 30 percent you might want to just tweak that yourself and see what you're happy with double shift prevention i've just left that in the default of 0 0.05 that's so you can't if you're Shift, shifting through things quickly um it doesn't you, you can't accidentally double shift down a gear when you're shifting into a corner really quickly uh that again that's really going to be a very personal setting uh the default's fine for me 0 0.05 throttle up a dead zone this was quite useful for us as i say we're using custom pt1 pedals and i've not set them up completely perfectly so it can be nice to have a uh, little bit of a dead zone at the other end of the throttle so I don't have to push the throttle all the way down but I could push it sort of nice in my case it's like 99.5% down and that guarantees it's at 100% before I hit even hit the actual stopper on the end of my pedals so you might want a little bit of upper dead zone on your throttle pedal again it's worth seeing how the sliders go and then getting it so you're comfortable so you can actually set, set up the sensitivity here for how you know how responsive things are how much pressure you need to put on we've got the break up a de upper dead zone set to 73 percent um that's because i'm using a load cell brake and i don't want to have to be pushing 25 30 kilograms of force on the brake whilst i'm playing race room so that lets me have good brake input but i don't have to be uh, breaking my knees every single corner because we're not training to be real race drivers here uh we've got the Clutch up a dead zone at 77, again, that makes it more sensitive. Clutch biting point, 
Uh, race room's clutch is really funky, so you probably want auto clutch on anyway, but that's the default at three. I've not fully worked out how race room's clutch operates. Uh, as I said, it's a little bit funky, but default at three, that seems fine. Now, on to the incredible world of force feedback. I spent quite a while this weekend tweaking and fiddling with things uh, and getting the force feedback to a nice feel with our TSPC racer. These settings should also be good for any belt driven wheel so uh, the t300 uh, and a lot of the fanatec wheels like the fanatec porsche wheel uh, the, the v2 base and the csl this these settings should all work fine with all those wheels again you're probably going to want to tweak it yourself and get get it exactly as you want but these will be a really good base solid baseline uh, setup so general force feedback settings you need to make sure force feedback is indeed on of course if it's turned off you won't have any force feedback force feedback intensity 100 percent yep fantastic smoothing we don't want any smoothing at all uh with the uh tspc race and t300 i noticed we have smoothing it, it adds a little bit of um and makes the wheel slightly unresponsive in some ways i don't know why it might be a little bug but it's better for me or well, it seemed better, it seemed more precise with the smoothing sector off. Smoothing is probably worth having on if you've got something like a G25 or a G29 where it's got a more direct uh, sort of coggy motor and the smoothing will stop the wheel oscillating in certain ways. So if you've got one of those wheels, it might be worth putting the smoothing up a little bit. Uh, force feedback spring, you don't want that on. <laughs> force feedback dampener, you don't want that on either. Dampeners are terrible. Don't ever put a dampener on your force feedback steering wheel. There's no, pretty much no reason to ever have a dampener put on your force feedback steering wheel unless you're mentally ill. Steering force settings, here we go, the nitty gritty. Those were the sort of overall settings. Onto the actual nitty gritty here, as I say. Steering force settings, we want this, we've got the steering force intensity set to 100. You can put this above 100, um, but we found 100 fine. Minimum force uh, by default this might be on 10 you want to turn this off if you're using a belt driven wheel like the t300 or the tspc racer i've not tested this with the fanatec wheels but with the tspc racer and the t300 if you have minimum force on you end up with a little dead zone at the uh, top of the wheel which again you don't want because dead zones are dead they're dead zones it's like it's like no man's land in uh, in the trenches world war one trenches you just don't want to go there so make sure force feedback minimum force is set to zero understeer uh, effect set i've set that to 90 percent. the understeer effect is uh, when you're turning and the car is losing grip because you're putting too much load on the front tires because you're either going into a corner too hot or you've chucked the car in too much the understeer effect will lighten up the force feedback resistance allowing you to know how much grip you've got in the tire so it's a really nice effect to have really good to turn up uh, I think the default is like 50% or something. So we've set that to 90%. We've got the vertical load to 40, lateral force to 40. Um, these affect how strong the force feedback is when the vehicle's pushed to the ground or when the vehicle's going around corners in, in various ways. 40% um, seemed fine to me. Again, the kind of sense where you might want to give it a little bit of a fiddle, but these are just solid baselines uh, that felt in my opinion felt really nice steering rack uh, is the forces going through the steering rack of the car we've just set that to 100 percent uh seemed to work well now then you've got outside of these core force feedback effects you've got these force feedback effect settings and these are sort of added on now they're not some of them are canned uh, in the when you hit a rumble strip for example you've got curved vibrations as soon as you touch the rumble strip it just plays a general vibration through the steering wheel um some of them are canned in a sense but they also correspond directly to the physics in the game so the engine vibrations the wheel will vibrate more or less depending on the rpm and uh, aspects of the engine uh, for us the main ones that i like to use is the slip effect which basically plays like a vibrational force feedback uh, effect when the car is slipping so if you were uh, if you've got the rear end wheels really spinning up or if you're going around a corner too hot and the car's sliding outwards because you, you've just put too much load in the car and it's losing grip the slip effect gives you a really nice uh vibration through the wheel which is actually relatively similar to what you'd feel in a real car give or take it's not real life here but we like to put the slip effect on 48 percent. i like to turn the engine vibrations off it just feels really 
artificial to me. It, it does, there's nothing convincing about uh, that type of vibration coming through the wheel. Curved vibrations put on 10% with a TSPC racer. You get a really nice tight as you go away for the curbing and uh, that works fantastic. Shift effect, uh, you really don't need it at all. To be honest, I don't know why I've put on 15 because you still you can't really feel it at 15% on the uh, TSPC racer. But that just gives you a little jolt each time you change gear. Um, again, it's, that's personal preference. Uh, the main thing to watch out for with these effect settings, though, is that you don't turn them too high. Because if you do, you might end up drowning out the core force feedback, the more important force feedback settings, such as the steering force intensity, the understeer, and the, one, the force feedback settings that actually tell you what the car is doing and how to respond to the car. Now, I think that goes through, that's most of the settings there. The, the other main one is once you're inside the actual game, so let's go to a single player event here. Single event, load it up. Uh, we've got the DTM car because that's what we've been driving all weekend. We'll go to the garage here so you can see what settings you need to set for the actual car um, for your wheel itself and how to get things to look uh, or how to work well with the car. Because when you first load the game up, you might find that the in-car steering doesn't actually line up with your physical steering wheel. So what we'll do now is we'll get that fixed. I'll show you what to do to fix that. As we load to the circuit, and our nice little Puma, Puma gloves high quality race gloves i could do with some race gloves for our um, sim racing though i always found when i put race gloves on uh it, it's more of a faff and then if you go to use a keyboard it's very hard to use the keyboard with race gloves on so we, we tend to just drive naked uh unfortunately we're not a sexy lady so sorry about that guys uh car setup here we go so to actually set the some specific stuff with the car in game once you've loaded into the session you're going to want to click on car setup and then you're going to want to go to steering settings now what i do is i make sure that the wheel range is set to the same as my wheel range in the profiler so that'd be like your logitech profiler or your t300 tspc racer profile in windows we have our wheel rotation in windows set to 900 so we set it in game to 900 as well. We've got the steering lock set to uh, 30. Steering lock is how sensitive the car is in game. So regardless of what you've got your actual rotation at, you use steering lock to make the car more or less sensitive. So the higher the steering lock value, the more sensitive the car is to input. So if I was to put this, oh, I think it normally goes up to about 40, 42. In some cases it goes up to 60. It depends on the car and the game. But... If I put down 40 now, if I was to turn the steering wheel just a little bit here, that would be quite aggressively turning the car. Uh, but if I was to have it all the way down to 8, that would do... I'd have to turn the wheel this much to achieve the same amount, if that makes sense. It's also worth saying that uh, steering lock will also affect the, uh, the, the force feedback in the sense of uh, the higher you have the steering sensitivity from the steering lock, the uh, stronger the force feedback effects will be, or the tighter the force feedback effects will be. Uh, but of course, you do still have to bear in mind there's a limitation to how much strength your force feedback wheel can put out. So it's all uh, give or takes. Uh, and then lastly, you've got a car specific force feedback multiplier, which lets you set the specific force feedback strength for the given car that you're driving. And it's worth saying as well, these steering settings are for each car. So every time you go into a, new, into a race with a new car, you're going to have to set these up to what you like. Uh, and that's quite nice because you'll find some cars you, you like quite heavy steering or stronger force feedback and other cars you like weaker force feedback or different steering lock ranges to get the most out of them. So it's really nice having this as a car, car by car setting. So we've set that. Another thing we like to do is go to um, down here. You've got the option to set, set, to set your position bar on the screen, the ghost, uh, ghost car and the race line. You generally don't want a race line on. Uh, the ghost car is more if you're doing uh, hot laps. Uh, I don't think that shows if you're racing against other people on a track or doing a race. Uh, transmission, uh, you'll want to make sure that's on manual. Another thing you'll want to set is if you go to options, then vehicle settings. I know it's a little bit convoluted. Sector 3 menus are a bit of a labyrinth to get through. But once you, once you got used to it, it's not too bad. In the car settings, options, vehicle settings... You're going to want to go to uh, animated driver. I put wheel only on because if you put hands on, some of the cars have uh, 
the animation stops once you get to about 300 or so degrees so in my opinion it's better to have wheel only otherwise it's a little bit off putting having steering wheel stop moving at random uh steering animation you can match it with your setup or do custom I, you know match setup will be whatever your wheel is custom if you set it to whatever your wheel is it'll be the same so i've just got it set to 900 degrees because that's what my wheel is shift mode we've got to manual here that's the same as the other menu setting obviously and then you've got the auto clutch which basically if you've got auto clutch on you don't actually have to use the clutch pedal on your sim rig uh to change gear even with a h pattern uh and that works but the thing is recently the manual having that set to off and using the clutch manually it doesn't seem to work properly to me it, it doesn't line up right to how i'd expect it to based off driving a uh, real road car which obviously isn't a race car but also driving r factor 2 a set of course and other simulators this setting just doesn't seem right so for now i just keep it with auto clutch on i still use the clutch pedal and that might make things a little bit smoother in some ways um but there you go for now just keep the auto clutch to on and it will uh, stop you accidentally breaking the gearbox in the game and remove any problems so <laughs> auto clutch on shift mode manual wheel rotation 900 steering animation custom animated driver wheel only you've also got some additional hud settings here should you want to change that uh, and if you want to tweak, tweak the audio options but the default audio settings in race room are actually quite good so there you go that's pretty much that is pretty much the car set up and ready to go and you can uh, start driving with that let's get on the track let's uh see what we can do here so with all those settings done your force feedback we missed the start there your force feedback should be really nice the uh control should all be there for you to look left look right look behind uh oh you can use w the w key to move forwards in the cockpit and th this is what i was saying about having the car view I, it's if you're just driving on a single screen you're better off having things quite far forward so you can really see the movement of the road relative to the movement of the uh, car bumper if that makes sense you can really see what the car is doing but the force feedback's absolutely superb with the settings we've got here we can feel all the little track details we can feel as a car drives into the back of our ass and uh, tries to ramish off the road but also down these corners this is zandvoort club the uh, beach track <laughs> as we're sliding around there you can feel the slip of the tires absolutely superb the force feedback in race room is just really really nicely done We'll fit, we've got to finish this lap. I'm, I've been driving this uh, DTM all weekend, just going through all the tracks, doing sort of seven lap sprint races. So good. So we've got a nice shake th through the wheel there as we're going through that corner. We're at the maximum steering angle for the front tyre scrubbing. It really does convey that bouncy feeling that you get in some real cars when you. Uh, when you're when you're turning too much relative to the grip of the fronts it's a really weird feeling that you get of course in a real car a lot of these things are conveyed through your bottom rather than through a steering wheel but you've got to get what you feel what you can from the driving simulators there's people on the hillside there waving the flags jumping up and down they're all excited across the start finish line we go and uh, there you go i think that pretty much as i say sums up the the core settings for race room racing experience from the actual input setting up your input device and uh then getting the most out of it with the force feedback uh what probably worth going over actually before we finish this video is uh, you can edit your your primary controllers by you can click on this here to rename your profile once you've got once you've got it all set up to something you like call it like uh happy or something doesn't really matter and uh, just by clicking on that profile it'll load up obviously load up that setting uh, you can obviously do another profile mess about with settings this could be a good idea once you've done this setup here you might want to go on an, on a different one and then set that up again to how you like it and then you can go backwards and forwards between them and compare them and see if it see you know see if the changes you made were were good or not um but there you go 
I hope, I hope that was useful. We'll probably do a separate video for video settings for specifically going through uh, getting performance out of it because that could be quite long-winded and this video is probably already a bit too long as it is. But uh, if you did find this useful, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Don't forget to like it. Ask any questions in the comment and I'll try and answer them as fast as I can. But Race Room Racing Experience, absolutely fantastic. Get it now, free to play. Uh, I will see you in the next video we do. Until then, thanks for watching and goodbye everybody.